Phil Fisher was a great man. He died maybe a month ago or thereabouts, and uh, uh, well into his 90s. Uh, his first book, I, I, and I believe it was Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, was written in 1958. And the second book was written a few years later. Those two books were terrific books. Uh, and as with Ben Graham, uh, you could really get it all by reading the books. I met Phil Fisher just once, uh, and it was great. I enjoyed it. I loved it. He was nice to me. Uh, but similarly, actually, to my experiences with Ben Graham, where I worked for him, I took his class and everything else, it was in the books. I mean, they were such good writers, and their thoughts were so clear that you didn't need to meet them personally. I enjoyed meeting them personally, obviously, but, but they, they, they got it across in words. And uh, the only time I met Phil was sometime after that 1962 book, or whatever it was, 61 or 62, and I was in San Francisco. I think it was in the Russ Building. I may be wrong on that. And I just, I just went there. I used to do that all the time when I was younger. And I'd go to New York, and I'd just drop in on all kinds of people. And I guess they thought because I was from Omaha that, you know, one time and they'd be rid of me. So, <laughs> And I would usually get in to see him. And uh, Phil, I did that with Phil. And it was extraordinarily nice to me. But uh, it wasn't that I gained new ideas, though, however, by meeting him, because I'd already read it in his, in, in his books. And Charlie actually, I met Charlie in 1959, and, and Charlie was sort of preaching the Fisher Doctrine also to me, a little different form, but, but his ideas paralleled those of Phil. So I was sort of getting it from, from both sides and made a lot of sense to me. Uh, I don't know what Charlie's experiences were with Phil. Well, I always like it when somebody who's attractive to me agrees with me. And Therefore, I've got very fond memories of Phil Fisher. The basic idea of that it was hard to find good stocks and, and it was hard to find good investments and that you wanted to be in good investments and therefore you'd just find a few of them that you knew a lot about and concentrate on those seemed to me such an obviously good idea. And indeed, it's proved to be an obviously good idea, yet 98% of the investing world doesn't follow it. That's been good for us. It's been good for you.